Hello artists and welcome to today's session, Drawing Transparent Objects. To begin, compose your own transparent object still life with three or more objects. Some objects to consider including into your still life would be colored glassware, silverware, light bulbs, vases, and bottles. The better your composition, the better your drawing. Add a spotlight to give more value contrast and highlights. Light and shadows will play an important role in the drawing transparent object process. There may even be light areas within or around shadow. Glass is usually shiny, glossy, and or reflective, making the highlights pure white. Most importantly, remember that glass is transparent. You can see objects and details through it. Objects and details visible through the glass will likely have some distortion because of refraction. Refraction is the visual distortion that happens when the glass is compressed, curved, or if it's filled with liquid. Set up your drawing easel and tape off your choice of colored paper evenly and parallel to your drawing board for a clean presentation. I have chosen warm brown in the color bisque for my paper in the background. First, we're going to start by using the traditional raw umber soft chalk pastel to sketch the contour lines of your objects, making sure to fill the entire page. Now, you can also use burnt sienna or even ultramarine blue for your underdrawing, but a very traditional method would be to use raw umber. And we're going to follow the outer edges slowly and pay attention to the areas where lines intersect overlap, reflect, and refract. should about do it. Now that I have all of the lines drawn onto the page, I really want to make sure to notice the balance in the symmetry of the shapes of the objects. I want to be as critical as possible and use a straight edge, even if necessary, to crisp up some of the lines to make sure that I'm measuring the exactitude of all of the architecture of these forms. I want to pay attention to the elliptical openings of the tops of the glasses. And I want to be very precise when drawing these. The more balanced and symmetrical the geometric shapes, of course, the more beautiful the drawing is going to be. Okay, now that I sort of fine-tuned the rims of all the elliptical openings in the tops of my objects, I now want to begin to add depth and dimension to my shapes to begin and mass in gradations of value, light, medium, and dark, with my pastels. You will want to use the raw umber for the shadows and white for all of the highlights. You want to make sure that you look for nuances and the reflections and the luminosities that are created by your theatrical lighting. And this part is what I consider to be the fun part because this is where the shapes are gonna really start to pop off the page just by adding darks and lights.
Okay. Now that the forms are starting to emerge from the page, you will want to begin to add color. Now, color takes a lot of mental energy whenever you start to critically think and apply it to your drawing. That's why we spend so much time investing in the compositional layout, all of the balance and the symmetry, and all of the values before we even begin color. Now, you want to make sure to remember that even the clear glass has a rainbow of other colors within it, much like a prism. Now, since you are in drawing two, if you happen to have colored glass around the house, then it could be even more exciting and fun to layer colored transparent objects in front of one another in your composition, much like the way that I added the um, amber colored drinking glass in front of the blue gin bottle. It kind of creates an interesting blend or mix of colors where we see some reflections through um, the glass objects. Those colors sort of mixed together. Plus, you're going to get a um, bouncing off of other colors, or what we call reflective light, uh, onto um, other areas. For instance, the green bottle does have a bit of um, green glow that's cast on the shadow um, on the tabletop. So there's going to be a lot of really nice areas for color exchange if you do pick colored objects. But um, even if you have just clear glass objects, there is still a rainbow of colors, even within those. Okay, so now I have most of the basic colors added and I'm starting to kind of develop some sense of uh, lighting and luminosity. But now at this stage, I really want to get in there and start layering more and include implied texture with the details by using more of the tips of my uh, pastels to just make more fine tune or thin marks. Um, you can also use pastel pencils. Uh, if you are more a detail-oriented person, um, you can try out hatching, cross-hatching, stippling, depending on the object that you have um, chosen to draw to give visual interest and to create a more convincing illusion of the transparency. So really trying to make things more see-through here and give it a sense of um, glow.
pretty good about some of these areas. I think they're starting to form and develop um, more layering effects. And it's really all about learning how to see, realizing that everything connects to everything else in your drawing. So each mark that you make in your drawing will inform the next mark. And before you know it, the magic of your transparent objects will start to emerge from the illusion of your drawing. I've had a lot of fun with you in today's session and I look forward to drawing with you again soon.